What's going on guys? So we are back here at E-Trailer still, and last time we showed you how fifth wheel kingpins actually meet and dock up to different fifth wheel hitches. So if you didn't check out that video, definitely go back and do it because it shows you a very deep dive into the differences of how each one of these little coupling systems work and the jaws close and lock around different types of fifth wheel hitches, and perhaps some of the differences that might help you determine which one's best for you. In today's video, we got Jake back. And Jake is gonna go over all sorts of different types of ball mounts or hitches. These aren't really what I would consider to be your traditional style hitch because your traditional style hitch is the one that everyone went to Lowe's and Home Depot and picked up that just slides right into a receiver. All of these are gonna have features and adjustability that are beyond what you might normally get with just your plain Jane uh, toe hitch. So. We're gonna kind of start from this end, work our way down and show you some really cool features. Some of them you've seen on my channel before and some you haven't. So I think you're gonna enjoy this video. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna start over here with arguably the strangest looking hitch I've ever seen. And this is made by a company called Stealth Hitches. So we were kind of looking at this a bit and I was pondering, what do you do with this? I mean, take a look at it. Take a moment and try to figure out how do you think this works? I mean, it's, it's super confusing looking, I ain't gonna lie. If I saw this, I'd be like, what am I looking at? This, this confuses me, but if you wanna kind of show me what this is, I know that the ones here are kind of locked in place for demonstration purpose, but why would you want a stealth hitch on your vehicle? So the reason you would want a stealth hitch on a vehicle primarily is so that um, your hitch is in stealth mode when you're not using it. Um, it comes in three different variations. You can get an inch and a quarter, a ball mount, and a two inch hitch receiver. Um, and the whole point of it is, is that you can twist this knob. So you'd have to reach up underneath your bumper fascia on your vehicle, twist this knob, and then your this hitch receiver itself will slide out and your bumper fascia is going to cover everything behind it and look like you don't have a hitch at all. Oh, so the, the main purpose of this isn't necessarily for like theft prevention. It's so you don't have to have the look of a hitch on a vehicle that traditionally may not have a hitch. Yep, absolutely. And their, their main focus when they started was to make hitches for cars that didn't have a hitch for them before. Um, so sportier cars, a lot of German cars, um, they don't have a hitch because they have a very strange way of mounting them, um, but this gave them a solution so that they can, on the weekends, they can go bike riding with their friends, they can go on a trip to a beach and take stuff on a cargo carrier, but th for the whole rest of the year, you don't have a hitch receiver um, hanging out the back of your car. So something that's kind of interesting that I just noticed is the only one that has chain loops appears to be this one right here with an actual ball on it. So are these mainly for like accessory racks, like cargo racks, bike carriers, and this one for towing? Yes, absolutely. And they, they even put the stickers on there um, just to show that the hitch receivers are not designed to insert a ball mount in either one of them. You have to use this, um, the ball mount itself, with the stealth hitch block, um, because otherwise there's too much movement. There's, there is very little, if no tolerance inside of this, but they don't want the tolerance inside of this hitch receiver affecting their connection. Gotcha, so this is just a great option for someone with say like a BMW or Mercedes mm -hmm. or a Lexus that wants to have the ability to carry their bikes around, not put it on the trunk of their vehicle on that funky bike rack that goes on the window and all that stuff and have the ability to carry their bikes around with them. Yep. Very cool, do you know what the towing capacity of this is or what a roundabout number is for it? Off the top of my head, I don't. A lot of them are going to be uh, 2,000 pounds, or 200 pounds of tongue weight and 2,000 pounds gross towing weight. It really depends on um, the vehicle, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, like most trailer hitches, but that is um, typically what those are going to be. It's gonna be like your small eight foot utility trailer that you might take to Lowe's, pick up some flowers. Yep, and many of these vehicles can't even tow that amount anyway, so you'll be more than safe. Yep, awesome. All right, so next we're gonna to move to a very familiar hitch that is featured on my channel a lot, and that is Waysafe. Now, Waysafe has the integrated scale right here, which is really cool, and you can adjust the hitch as well. A locking mechanism here, and they also have locks up here, so you just can kind of protect yourself a little bit more from theft. This is actually a very smart locking system that they put here. Um, you can swap the ball out really easily by simply removing it. There's a pin on the back that pops out, and you can throw your larger ball or your smaller ball in here, which is really nice. These are cool. The one that you have not seen on my channel is 
the one that's kind of a, a bit of a contradiction to Waysafe because it actually doesn't have a scale on it, and that is this one right here. This specific one has an incredible drop on it. I don't know how big that drop is. It looks to be like a nine and a half inch drop on it. You can see they call it this the 180 hitch because you can flip it around and you have both of the balls already mounted in place. So you have your two and your two and five sixteenths inch ball. You still have your locking mechanism on this side. But yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate because I really wish that had a scale in it. That would be like such a, a cool design because right now there's not a heck of a lot that differentiates this from a lot of other hitches on the market, right? And it's cool, but again, the whole point of Waysafe is to have that scale on the side. Would you say that that's probably not the heaviest seller? I'd imagine the one with the scales is the main reason that drives people towards Waysafe products. Yeah, if you're towing the same trailer all the time there's um, and not having different weights on it, you're always putting the same tractor on it, you're always putting the same whatever on it then a scale may not be for you that's true um but if you're towing a whole lot of different trailers and you need those two different balls it is very nice to have both of them there so you don't have to go into your case um, in your vehicle and swap this out and take it apart it's not that big a deal um, but it's a lot handier having it right there with you well and the other nice aspect of it is just the weight savings of being aluminum I actually did a recent comparison just showing you the weight savings between a fully decked out way safe hitch like this versus a BMW Companion or some of the others and it was like half the weight. So yeah, not having to lug in some huge, huge hitch even though it's very, very large in size physically, but it's very light because they've used aircraft grade aluminum, which is super cool. All right, moving over to Gen Y. So Gen Y is an incredibly popular brand of hitches for people looking for not just something that is super tough and rugged and capable, but something that also has that kind of rugged off-road, you know, it's the it's the Jeep, it's the Bronco, it's the Humvee kind of version of a, of a hitch. It's not small. None of them, in my opinion, are, are small footprint. They're all pretty large, but they have a, a couple convenience features that are really nice. How do you feel about the Gen Y product? I like the Gen Ys. Um, the only thing I have against them is that for a reasonable ball mount, um, which is anywhere between a, a zero drop to a six inch drop, um, you are going to have a significant amount of weight because they are built um, so well and so robust. Um, they're one of the few manufacturers that have a solid shank that is not an aluminum ball mount. Most of the aluminums are going to be a solid shank, but that's solid steel. Um, so if it's going to be a ball mount that you're going to leave in the back of your vehicle all the time, um, that's not something to necessarily worry about unless the trailer hitch on your vehicle has a low tongue weight rating those ball mounts are going to cut into that weight rating yep. so there's just something to think about and the capacity of your vehicle yep. right so if you have like a, a half ton truck with 1400 pounds capacity you could very well eat up 100 pounds of it pretty quickly if you try to put something like this in the back of your truck because it is very heavy and just the profile look how far off the back this sticks out that's probably what, what do you think, about 14 inches? Yep, this, Where, this ball mount here, I'd like to take a bet, probably weighs 45 to 50 pounds. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Yep. And then right here, you can actually see how the technology works. So you got these rubber cords that surround this solid piece of squared tube that goes through it. And as it rotates right here, it presses up against these rubber cords. And that creates that torsion effect of, of suspension, very similar to like the Dexter Tor flex axles, very similar to the Moride independent suspension on an RV. It's again, it's that, those four cords that are around that solid, you know, uh, square tube that goes through there, and that that leverage against that, that pushing is what creates that suspension effect. And then here's their new version right here. I recently did a video on this where this thing actually flips around and stows. And this is designed for the GMC or the Chevy with the new tailgate in a tailgate, the pro tailgate that drops down so it doesn't make contact with that. Very cool. But even this right here, which is rated at like 12,000 pounds, which in the world of heavy duty hitches is actually a relatively low rating for a Gen Y hitch, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but this thing right here is still super, super heavy for its size. They do give you a pull point for a shackle, so you pull it out, you mount it like this, um, and many people think this is for the last ball that you don't have, um, which in this case would be a two inch ball, mm -hmm. because we have uh, two and five sixteenths and a one and seven eighths, 
This is actually for a shackle, for a pull point. Okay, yeah. So you mount a shackle in there, thread it into place, and then you've got a, a nice strong pull point um, without having to put a rope around either of these two Yeah, bolts. it's a closed system too, so mm -hmm. it's less chance of something falling off and shooting back. Very cool. And then finally, we're gonna look at the B&W products here. So B&W, which you guys probably know, is kind of a favorite of mine. I've been a big fan of their products for a long time, both fifth wheel and conventional. But this is their toe and stow product. Basically everything here can slide out and flip down to the back so it's out of the way so you don't have to hit anything. The profile off the back of your receiver is only a couple of inches, maybe two inches, versus this much of your hitch. That's really the, the big thing. So it's hard to compare B&W against Gen Y because if you get a Gen Y, you automatically know how much bulk you're gonna have behind your receiver. Whereas B&W, the whole point of the toe and stow system is that it's stowed away so it's not something that your knee's gonna hit. And this one shares kind of that same ability by pulling the pin out and flipping this around to the other side and then you only have a really small profile here but you're still gonna have a lot of hitch hanging down underneath the back part of your bumper so you do want to keep that in mind but the tone still works really well and you get really good capacities with this as well and i love the fact that they've now come out with a pintle type attachment here as well so now you have a means to use your ball by dropping it down slightly and then you have the pin right here and then you can pin it back in place right there. And now you have a pintle for your truck. And you put the pin through here and it'll lock it in place. Or actually, I think this one down here. There you go. So now your pintle's locked in place. So again, you have a closed system right here, which is really nice. And then on some of these, these things are gonna be rated insanely high. Like this one, 21,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, 2,100 pound actual hitch weight. Very, very cool. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts on these different hitches. What hitch do you use? Which one do you love and why do you love it? And uh, maybe we can get the folks at eTrailer to pull it out and we can do some reviews on those as well. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.